we figured out that the firm would be producing its optimal amount at 25 kilos tomatoes because this is where the marginal revenue equals the marginal cost. Now whether the firm's making profit or not will depend on whether at that level of output the average cost of production is lower than the average revenue. There's more money coming in per kilo than is being spent per kilo on producing the tomatoes, then the firm must be making profit per kilo. So in our example, we can see, given the average cost curve, that at the optimal level of output, determined by the point where marginal revenue equals marginal cost, that the firm's average cost of production is $3.75 per kilo. It's selling the tomatoes at $5 a kilo. The cost is $3.75 per kilo. So we can see that the profit per unit is $1.25. Then we simply multiply that by the number of units that they're selling to get the total profit. So $1.25 times 25 units gives us $31.25 total profit. At any other output level, it would make less profit. So it is maximizing its profit at this point and will choose this output. Okay, so would it be the case that this firm and all the other firms that are like this in the marketplace continue to make profits uh, forever and ever? Well, the answer is no. If the firms in, say, our tomato market are all making profits, then that will tend to attract new firms to the marketplace. There's no barriers to entering the market. So you will get an increase in supply. Now remember earlier when we were looking at the market as a whole, when there was an increase in the number of sellers in the marketplace, the supply curve will shift to the right. And when the supply curve shifts to the right, the equilibrium price will change. How will it change? The equilibrium price will fall. So, if firms are making profit, new firms are attracted to the market. Supply increases, the equilibrium market price falls. Now, what happens to the firm's average revenue when prices fall? Average revenue also falls, as does marginal revenue. If the marginal revenue and the average revenue fall, then profits get squeezed. And this will keep happening until there is no profits being made by any of the firms in this market. That is, all of the firms are breaking even. At that point, breaking even, where the optimal output is at the point where the average revenue equals the average cost, then there is no incentive for any new firms to enter the marketplace. In that case, supply won't fall any further, and so the equilibrium market price won't fall any further, and so we would say that the price will stabilise at this level. It will stabilise at the point where all of the firms are just breaking even. Whether perfect competition, this perfectly competitive market structure, is a desirable thing or not, kind of depends on from whom, whose perspective you're looking at it. From the perspective of consumers, it's pretty clear that most of the time, a perfectly competitive market is a pretty desirable thing. Why? Because over time, the prices of the, of the product being sold by all of the firms competing in that market will fall, fall, fall until it reaches the average cost of production. That is, prices will fall to the lowest point they possibly can without the firms going bankrupt uh, or losing money. So this is obviously good for consumers because it means very low prices relative to the alternative. 
From the perspective of firms, however, from the perspective of businesses who are participating in this market, perfect competition is kind of a living hell because it means that firms can be sure that over time their profits, if they're making any, will erode away and they will end up breaking even. This is actually one of the reasons why often firms and entrepreneurs don't like competitive markets. They don't like to operate in competitive markets. If they're in a competitive market and that market structure doesn't change in any way, then they're kind of doomed to just break even in the long run forever. The way to escape that situation often is that entrepreneurs will try and find a way of getting out of the market. That is, they'll try and produce a product which is different to what everyone else is producing in the marketplace. This is one of the things that they will often attempt to do. So that they're not producing the same as all of their other competitors. They're producing something which is unique in some way, that has its own niche of consumers who are interested in their product. That is, they will attempt to differentiate their product from other rivals. But we should bear in mind that if that happens, it's entirely possible that the firm, assuming it's done its market research and discovered that it's producing a different product that consumers actually want, then it could be making profits. But what would happen then? It could be that new firms will be attracted to this new market for this new kind of product. And in that case, they will steal customers from the existing firm which came up with the innovation. And the firm's average revenue will fall and will keep falling perhaps until the firm breaks even like all of the other firms in the marketplace. And so you could end up in a situation where, again, you have a new market in which all the firms are breaking even 